So these past couple of weeks have been all about the brand new M2 MacBook Air, and for good reason, because it's a fantastic little MacBook, it looks and feels premium, and such a premium device deserves some premium accessories. So I went ahead and rounded up some of my favorite ones. Let's ramble. Hold up. Hey, what's up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So like I said in the intro, I rounded up some really great premium accessories for you guys. But before we have a look at those, I am mindful that one of the major demographics buying this MacBook are students, and they might not necessarily be looking for the most premium accessories, but rather for the most affordable and functional ones. And if that's you, don't worry, because I have a special Best Accessories Student Edition lined up for you as well. So definitely check back in for that. And if you're not subscribed, now would be a good time so you don't miss out on any of that. And of course, your sub would be much appreciated. Right, one of the most important things to do when you get a new MacBook is of course, getting your charging situation sorted. And I have two really great solutions for you today. The first one is by Aohi. And if you've been to the channel before, you've seen me talk about their products. They send me stuff to review from time to time and I have yet to be disappointed because their stuff, especially their charging solutions, are always on point. And this one is no exception. Apple recently came out with their 35 watt dual USB-C charger. This one by Aohi is a 40 watt fast charger and look how tiny this is. It has these retractable prongs, which makes it perfect for travel. Also, how dope is that yellow color? It will charge your MacBook Air from zero to full in about two hours. The dual USB-C ports make use of intelligent power allocation, meaning the port automatically detects and optimizes the power supply to the device it is hooked up to. It uses Pi technology, which means your device will be fully protected while charging, and the little indicator light will tell you the charging status. This thing is so small, I mean, why wouldn't you take this with you? If you wanna pick one up for yourself, there's a link in the description. Next up is another charging solution, which is definitely a lot bulkier than the Aohi charger, and that is this beast right here. This thing is made by a company called OmniCharge, and this model is the Omni 20C Plus, and it's easily become my favorite portable battery, probably of all time. It's small enough to pack in any bag, but powerful enough to charge your MacBook and any other device you might have with you because this thing has a maximum output of 100 watts and for a travel battery, that's kind of insane. It has two 18 watt USB-A ports, one USB-C port that delivers 100 watts and another one that delivers 65 watts output and both accept 45 watts input. And that's important because this is how you actually charge this device back up. But it has two more tricks up its sleeve. One is the fact that it is also a wireless charging pad, which will charge your iPhone delivering 10 watts output. And the other one is that this thing actually serves as a USB hub too. So you can hook it up to your MacBook using the USB-C port and use the other ports as a hub for things like file transfers. Super useful. When you turn on the device, the little OLED screen will give you all kinds of information like which ports are active, which ones are in use, and how much juice is flowing to your devices. It also keeps track of the temperature, which can be very useful in these hotter days. OmniCharge was kind enough to send me this little carrying case as well, which really makes this the perfect all-in-one travel hub for me. Again, links in the description. And some of these links will have discount codes. If they do, I'll mention it below. Now with all that traveling going on, we're gonna need a bag. And I do have a thing for bags. OGs to the channel will know that I always try to include one bag in every accessories video, and I have a really nice one today. Now this thing is not cheap, okay? But it's so nice. This one is made by Harbor London. They make the most amazing handcrafted leather bags and accessories. I recently reviewed one of their leather iPad cases and I liked it so much that I wanted to review their MacBook case as well. Everything about this bag just screams premium. And I know these things aren't cheap and I'll definitely be reviewing more budget-friendly alternatives as well. But for those of you who appreciate a fine bag, you can't go wrong with this one. They make these messenger bags in different sizes from MacBook Air all the way up to 16 inch. And I like that they make them to size because I like a snug fit so my MacBook doesn't slide around in my bag getting all scuffed. The inside has a soft fabric lining, a dedicated tablet pocket, cord and pen slots, perfect for AirPods as well. And there's a little carabiner to hold your keys. Definitely worth checking out. Speaking of traveling and style, how about these wireless headphones from Subsu? They come in this beautiful leather case. I'm guessing it's vegan leather and I absolutely love the brown and bronze accents on these headphones. The logo is visible on the sides, but it's elegantly done, so I don't really mind. Now, obviously they don't just look good, they sound great as well. 
I'm especially impressed with her active noise cancellation, which works really, really well, especially in very noisy places like a busy road or an airport. They also have ENC, which basically means noise cancellation for your voice. So the microphones pick up your voice and they try to block out everything else. I've been trying this out mainly on my walks in the city center and it works really well. The person on the other side can easily understand what I'm saying. Transparency mode is super useful if you wanna still hear your surroundings. And if you use something like the Apple AirPods Pro, you will be familiar with this option. It's quite nice. Now, I wouldn't consider myself an audiophile, but listening to music on these is an absolute treat. And I wish I had a way to let you hear it. The most impressive feature though, is probably the battery life. These headphones deliver 80 hours of music playback and 60 hours with noise cancellation on. And that's pretty insane. I have to admit, I'm not the kind of user that lets the battery drain completely. I tend to top up my tech before that happens, but I've used these for two weeks without charging pretty intensively and they still didn't die on me. I can definitely, definitely recommend especially since the price is actually pretty decent compared to other headphones. Of course, we're not always traveling, and when I'm at the office, I actually prefer using my MacBook either hooked up to a screen or elevated with some peripherals. The M2 Air is super portable and light, and I like that about it, but I'm not a fan of working on a MacBook like that for very long hours, you know, sitting all hunched over. In that case, I like to put it on a riser and use an external keyboard and mouse instead. A company called Melgeek sent me this keyboard to review. It's called the Mojo 68. It looks absolutely crazy and I love it. I mean, look at this thing. I've never seen anything like it. It comes in different colors with different keys as well, but this one looks so quirky. I just had to have this one. I mean, whoever came up with this must have had a good laugh. If you look inside, you can even see a little sign saying, need keyboard, not friends. Obviously, it's not just an interesting looking keyboard. It is actually really pleasant to use. It is nice and heavy, so it doesn't slide all over your desk. Of course, that also makes it not suitable for travel, just so you know. I like that it's a bit higher than most keyboards, and the key travel is really satisfying. You do get that clickety-clack sound, obviously, but it's kind of dampened almost, so it's not overly annoying for the people around you. It supports wireless, Bluetooth, or a wired connection, whatever you prefer. Of course, it has RGB, and the keys are programmable and hot swappable. I have two more accessories for you, and these last two, in my opinion, are necessities. The M2 MacBook Air comes with only two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and if you're gonna use it in an office setting and you wanna hook it up to an external monitor and some peripherals, you're gonna run out of ports really quickly. The guys over at OWC make some really great solutions for that, including full-blown docks, but I really like this tiny Thunderbolt 4 hub. Most of my accessories are gonna be USB-C or Thunderbolt, so this is the perfect one for me. And for the odd USB-A accessory, there is a port on the front. Now, this is a Thunderbolt 4 hub. Of course, that doesn't magically make your M2 MacBook Pro ports Thunderbolt 4, but it is backwards compatible with the MacBook's Thunderbolt 3 ports, so it works just fine. The only thing I really don't like, and that's not exclusive to OWC, I have it on most of my hubs, and that is the fact that the host port is on the front. Why? Why can't all the cables just go in the back so I don't have to run one of them across my desk, making it look all ugly? My OCD can't handle that. Maybe there's actually really good reason for it. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. And if not, please next time, put that port on the back. Thanks. This next accessory has been my absolute favorite external SSD of all time. And needless to say, you will need one of these, especially if you picked up the base 256 gigabyte model like I did. This is actually a Thunderbolt SSD. It's crazy fast. It's the Lassie Rugged SSD. I did an entire video comparing this drive to other premium drives. I'll put a link up here if you're interested, but for the purpose of this video, just know this. It's actually super rugged. It's waterproof. I mean, bottom of a river, still working waterproof. It is crazy fast and it's stupid expensive. My wallet cried a little when I bought it two years ago, but I've used it every single day ever since, so it's been definitely worth every penny. I edit entire video projects straight from this drive, no files ever touch my computer's internal storage. I love it to bits, and it's just my favorite SSD of all time. All right, guys, that's it for this roundup. If you made it this far in the video, I salute you, and please type salute in the comments so I know who you are. If you enjoyed the video, please give one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next one.